This is the fifth video for the ethics and legal considerations portion of the animal chiropractic class. We're still talking about the licensing requirements. In this video, I'm primarily going to talk about supervision. As we've talked about already, uh, for the most part, only veterinarians are licensed to treat animals. And in nearly every state, uh, treatment of animals can be provided only by veterinarians or veterinarians may delegate and supervise the care provided to the animals. Now, part of what makes this confusing or, or difficult to understand is most states don't really define supervision and many states don't have very clear rules about delegation. So it's confusing and difficult to figure out, but for the ones that have defined it or have addressed these issues, there's basically three different levels of supervision, indirect, direct, and immediate. Indirect is the least restrictive. Generally, what indirect supervision means is that the supervising veterinarian is available to communicate. That may be by phone or it may be on the premises, but they don't have to be on the premises. Direct communication, or supervision rather, requires that the veterinarian be on the premises where the care is being provided. They don't necessarily have to be in the same room, but they have to be available to respond promptly if any help is needed. The most restrictive level of supervision is immediate supervision, which means the veterinarian is available to intervene if necessary. I think that means the veterinarian needs to be in the same room and, and almost looking over the chiropractor's shoulder as they provide the animal chiropractic care. So for example, here's a definition of, super, of indirect supervision from Alabama. Veterinarian's not on the premises, but has given written or oral instructions for the treatment of the animal. And the animal has been initially examined by a veterinarian. I think one thing that's pretty common as we go through all the different levels of supervision is the veterinarian providing the supervision must have examined the animal and generally must have a valid client or veterinarian client patient relationship with that animal. Uh, Alabama code also defines direct supervision. As I mentioned, this means the veterinarian is on the premises and available to help fairly quickly. And then Alabama finally defines immediate supervision, which means the veterinarian is an audible and visual range of the animal patient and the person treating the patient. Veterinarian has to be able to see and hear the patient and the person providing the care. Now, Arkansas, in one of their attorney general opinions, has this definition of immediate supervision. Uh, means a veterinarian's direct observation with the opportunity to advise or intervene in each veterinary chiropractic procedure. Again, I think that means the veterinarian at least has to be in the same room. Uh, certainly if it's uh, uh, in an animal hospital, the veterinarian needs to be very nearby to provide assistance under immediate supervision. Now, Arkansas has one of the more restrictive statutes for chiropractors providing animal chiropractic. Uh, chiropractors are allowed to practice animal chiropractic only if they are licensed to practice chiropractic in Arkansas and they are certified by the AVCA and the chiropractic is performed under the immediate supervision of an Arkansas licensed veterinarian. So it requires some pretty good qualifications for the chiropractor to perform it and it also requires that immediate supervision. And again, there's the definition in Arkansas of immediate supervision. It means immediate vicinity uh, with the opportunity to advise or physically intervene. Uh, Texas has a much less restrictive statute. Uh, the veterinarian providing the supervision must have a valid veterinarian client patient relationship. The veterinarian must have examined the animal and determined that animal chiropractic will not likely be harmful to the patient. 
and the veterinarian must have an acknowledgement that chiropractic is an alternate therapy uh, and that consent, that acknowledgement rather, needs to be signed by the client. And that I do know that when the Board of uh, vet, Veterinary Medical Examiners is reviewing uh, vet, uh, veterinarians, that acknowledgement is one of the things they will look for uh, in connection with veterinarians uh, who are providing animal chiropractic care. Texas requires only direct or general supervision. Uh, general supervision means only that the veterinarian is readily available to communicate. The veterinarian does not need to be on the premises. Uh, they can communicate by telephone or some other means. Um, or, of course, the uh, veterinarian can provide direct supervision where they are physically present. Texas does not require that physical presence, but some veterinarians uh, who may not be comfortable with animal chiropractic may prefer that physical presence until they develop some trust with the chiropractor. Uh, New Mexico generally prohibits anyone from practicing veterinary medicine, including chiropractic, except under the direct supervision of a licensed veterinarian. Direct supervision is going to require that the veterinarian, again, have a valid veterinarian-client-patient relationship. The treatment must be performed on the order of a licensed veterinarian. The veterinarian must be on the premises and readily available. So in this situation, the chiropractor cannot see the patients in their own office. The chiropractor or whoever is providing the animal chiropractic care must be uh, uh, on the same premises as the veterinarian. New Mexico also requires that the, that the veterinarian assume liability for the quality of the treatment and that the fee be paid to the veterinarian. Now the veterinarian can still employ the person providing the animal chiropractic care, but the client, when they write the check or run their credit card, must pay it or to the veterinarian or the veterinary facility. Uh, Kentucky defines veterinary assistants and veterinary technicians. Uh, generally, in most states, the same rules that allow a chiropractor to provide animal chiropractic would also allow a layperson to provide animal chiropractic. A few states limit uh, veterinarians to delegating only to someone who has some designation or registration like a veterinary technician or a veterinary assistant. Pay attention to those rules if they exist in your state. And if you're a chiropractor who plans to practice animal chiropractic in one of those states, make sure that it, well, at the same time you're getting this AVCA uh, cert certification, that you're also looking to become meet the qualifications to become a, a veterinary assistant or veterinary technician or whatever the language is used by, by that particular state. Uh, generally, the Kentucky rule, again, requires direct supervision, meaning the uh, uh, veterinarian is available in, in the same, not in the same room, but in the same building at least. Um, and talks about the things that can be delegated and cannot be delegated. Uh, California and their regulations clearly says that musculoskeletal manipulation uh, performed upon animals is the practice of veterinary medicine. So it requires a licensed veterinarian. Uh, California's regulations also do go a step above what most states require and do set out some requirements for veterinarians who provide musculoskeletal manipulation. Of course, the veterinarian must have examined the animal. They must assume responsibility. They must discuss with the owner uh, the course of treatment. Uh, and the veterinarian must either be available for follow-up or make arrangements for follow-up. Uh, and lastly, have a signed acknowledgement or consent from the owner. California regulations then go on to define when a 
licensed chiropractor can provide animal chiropractic or musculoskeletal manipulation. The uh, supervising veterinarian must comply with everything required in the previous section. Uh, after the chiropractor completes their initial exam, they must consult with the veterinarian to determine or confirm that musculoskeletal manipulation is appropriate. In an animal hospital setting, the veterinarian must be on the premises, not necessarily in the same room, but on the premises. And the supervising veterinarian is responsible for the records. They are required to make sure the records are accurate, complete, and maintained for the time required by law. California's regulations also spell out that if the veterinarian terminates the relationship with the animal or with the chiropractor, the chiropractor shall immediately terminate the treatment. Uh, and it also spells out that chiropractors can be uh, disciplined for engaging in the unlicensed practice of vet veterinary medicine and veterinarians who don't follow these rules of delegation uh, shall be deemed to have engaged in unprofessional conduct. So hopefully you start to get an idea of how unprecise and ambiguous these rules can be. Uh, they talk about requiring supervision. It's not always clear what kind of supervision is required, uh, which brings us to the next state, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is the only state that doesn't require a referral and doesn't require supervision by a veterinarian. Chiropractors who are certified uh, to engage in animal chiropractic uh, can engage in diagnosis and treatment of animals uh, without violating the Veterinary Practice Act. Uh, chiropractors who aren't certified to practice animal chiropractic can provide animal chiropractic only on animals that are referred from a licensed veterinarian. I'm sure the chiropractors might think this is the best rule uh, and certainly it is the most permissive rule with respect to allowing uh, chiropractors to treat animal, animals uh, without supervision. But I also think even in Oklahoma, the chiropractors need to remember that there are areas where the veterinarians have much more expertise than the chiropractor and the chiropractor needs to respect those professional, that professional expertise and give the uh, uh, veterinarians an opportunity to consult and refer with the veterinarians when appropriate. Uh, Nevada is an example of a state that maybe requires a little bit less supervision. Uh, only veterinarians and registered chiropractors can practice animal chiropractic. Uh, chir a chiropractor may provide care only under the direction of a veterinarian. And the chiropractor must assume liability for the quality of the care. Now, Nevada also has this clause that I think is confusing where it says the chiropractor can perform animal chiropractic without supervision during the animal chiropractic procedure. But even though that has the regulation or excuse me, the code has this uh, provision in it, don't forget this from the previous section talking about requiring the care to be provided under the direction. Now, I'm not sure what the difference is between direction and supervision, but there needs to be at least some involvement of a veterinarian, at least a referral, and at least general supervision um, in, in the sense that the veterinarian is readily available to communicate with the uh, chiropractor performing the animal chiropractic. Uh, Nevada also has some other rules you should be aware of. Uh, records must be kept for four years. Uh, within 48 hours of the initial visit, 
a complete medical record must be sent by the chiropractor or the person providing animal chiropractic to the veterinarian and within 48 hours after each subsequent visit a progress report must be sent and the chiropractors who are preparing those medical reports should keep in mind this section of the Nevada Code where they list what needs to be included in that medical record. So it would behoove the chiropractor to be certain that they're following all of these rules precisely because if the veterinary board were to investigate, even if there was some supervision, I would imagine it would be fairly simple to find some cases where the chiropractor failed to send the records, either the, the medical record or the progress report, to the veterinarian within that 48-hour time period. So you need to deliver the records, they need to be complete records, and you should maintain a, a some kind of documentation about how the records were sent and when they were sent. Minnesota allows chiropractors to engage in animal chiropractic only if they're registered to do, do so and only if the animal has been referred by a veterinarian. Uh, by the way, AVCA certification should be sufficient to register to provide as an animal chiropractor. Minnesota also has some rules about treatment records. Uh, records must be maintained for at least three years. They should be available to the patient's owner. And if the owner asks that they, the records be sent to the referring veterinarian, they should be provided to the veterinarian. Uh, Minnesota also requires that a, a chiropractor who treats both animals and humans in the same facility must have a conspicuous sign to let customers know that animals are treated on, on the premises. Uh, that helps patients know if they have particular allergies. That helps them know whether they may have, uh, uh, have concerns when they see that chiropractor. Rule in Colorado allows a licensed chiropractor who is registered to perform animal chiropractic. As long as it's consistent with the scope of practice for chiropractors, and the animal has a veterinary medical clearance. A chiropractor who is not registered not only needs that veterinary medical clearance, but also must have supervision that is direct on-premises supervision by the veterinarian. Colorado has this unique provision, I shouldn't say unique, it's, it's one that I haven't seen in other states that says laypersons, people who are not chiropractors or veterinarians, may not perform animal chiropractic. And to me that makes sense that chiropractors and veterinarians should be treated differently in their qualifications uh, to provide animal chiropractic care. Colorado also has some specific rules about the record keeping. Uh, the veterinarian uh, may require the veterinarian's presence, so it's not required by the rules if the chiropractor is registered. And remember, if the chiropractor is not registered, the veterinarian does need to be on premises. But even though the rule doesn't require it, the veterinarian certainly may require it. And the chiropractor and veterinarian should continue their collaboration for the animal patient. and the records must be maintained for three years. One thing you'll see about the animal records is generally the records don't have to be kept for as long as records of human patients. Uh, Colorado spells out that either the chiropractors or that the chiropractors can be disciplined. They also require a separate treatment room. Animals and humans cannot be treated in the same room, cannot be used with this, cannot be treated with the same tables or the same equipment. And only chiropractors who are qualified and registered may use titles like animal chiropractor.
So just in general, general observations about some of these regulations. What are the qualifications required to practice animal chiropractic? For veterinarians in most states, there is no requirement for additional training or any additional certification before the veterinarian provides animal chiropractic. Personally, I think that's a recipe to give animal chiropractic a bad reputation because those untrained veterinarians are more likely to injure animals and get bad results than people who are properly trained to provide chiropractic care. Uh, Oklahoma does require, doesn't just allow every veterinarian to provide animal chiropractic. Uh, veterinarians can engage in animal chiropractic only if they have some additional malpractice coverage and only if they have appropriate training like the AVCA certification. So that's the requirement for veterinarians to provide animal chiropractic. Now the next question is about chiropractors. What additional training is required for them? Generally, if they're providing the animal chiropractic under the supervision of, of a veterinarian in most states, the chiropractor does not have to have any additional training. Now again, just like with the veterinarians, I think that's a recipe for disaster because chiropractors who don't understand animal anatomy and physiology, uh, don't have any training in animal chiropractic, are more likely to injure the animals, more likely to get bad results, and as a result, give the profession of animal chiropractic a bad reputation. There are a few states that specifically mention the AVCA certification as a qualification to uh, give chiropractors the right to provide animal chiropractic. Uh, again, without the, with the exception of Oklahoma, some kind of supervision or direction is going to be required in every state. And then finally, what kind of qualifications should be required for laypersons? Uh, most veterinary practice acts include a provision. <laughs> <coughs> most veterinary practice acts include a provision that laypersons may treat their own animals. Otherwise, laypersons can provide that treatment only under a veterinarian supervision. But keep your eyes open for some of those states that require that the veterinarian delegate only to someone like a veterinary technician who has some kind, some kind of additional registration or training. And last comment uh, about the regulations, licensing statutes is about adjusting animals and humans in the same clinic. Generally, I don't think that's a good idea. There are some human patients who have very severe allergies uh, to animals, and it's it's just not appropriate to expose them to the to have that allergic reaction. Uh, when you have animals in your clinic at the same time as human patients, there's a risk that the animals may injure your patients. Um, you know, dogs uh, will be dogs and will sometimes bite people who don't know how to behave around them. I think you also increase the risk of injury to your employees uh, who are used to working with human patients but may not be used to working with animal patients. Uh, there are some states that impose legal requirements. Uh, in Texas, there's a general rule for chiropractors that they must uh, maintain or they can't practice in unsanitary facilities or with unsafe equipment. Now, although it doesn't specifically address animal chiropractic, I would think uh, animal dander would be considered unsanitary. Uh, Minnesota specifically requires that you have to have separate facilities and equipment, uh, as does Colorado. In this last slide, just, just includes a few quotes that I think are helpful about dogs or good thoughts about dogs. Uh, I like the second one, we give dogs time we can spare, space we can spare, and love we can spare. In return, dogs give us their all. It's the best deal man has ever made. 
And last one I like is the, uh, uh, or the second from the last I also like, if your dog is fat, you aren't getting enough exercise. Those are just some helpful thoughts to think about uh, as we get through the middle of this uh, lecture.